I'm Dr. Amy Moore. I'm a cognitive psychologist and the director of research for Learning RX. And this is the Learning RX Difference, a new way to talk about our reading program. And when I say reading program, I mean our reading programs collectively. So lift off Read RX and Comprehend RX. So here are the main points that we're going to cover this morning. I'm going to talk a little bit about the state of reading achievement in our country right now, and then share with you the science of reading, how Learning RX aligns with the science of reading. Again, I'll show you our brand new revised Learning RX reading skills pyramid and give you new language to talk about our programs. So according to the report on the condition of education in 2021, 35% of fourth graders and 34% of eighth graders could not read proficiently. In fact, the state of reading proficiency among American students hasn't budged much at all in decades. But why is that? So this strange phenomenon occurred in the 1980s. There was this group of educators that suggested that we were boring children with phonics instruction. And instead, we should just read to them, immerse them in exciting stories and print rich environments, which is important by the way, but they stopped there. And so this started this debate um, or something called the reading wars between the phonics camp and this whole language camp. And so to diffuse that debate, um, after the 2000 National Reading Panel said that phonics are essential, the whole language camp added a little bit of phonics back in, kind of like a pinch of salt on a huge steak. And what they did is they called that balanced literacy. And that ended the war. But it didn't improve the state of reading achievement. So within the last few years, we've finally begun to swing that pendulum back where it belongs based on a comprehensive body of years of research and contributions from multiple fields, the fields of education, special education, literacy, psychology, neuroscience, neurology, and using many different research designs. And that tells us how we learn to read, what skills we need, how skills work together, what brain areas are involved, and it all converges on a single evidence-based approach to teaching basic reading skills, which we'll talk about shortly. But let's look at what the science of reading tells us about how we learn to read. Here we go. All right, let's look at what happens in the brain. Cool pictures coming up and you're welcome to take screenshots. All right, when we hear a spoken word, when we hear a word spoken to us, a small section in the center of the left side of our brain lights up. And in less than a second, it spreads downward and forward until a large part of the entire left side is activated. You can see that these are milliseconds. And so the part that lit up is that part of the brain that deals with speech. But look at the rear part of the brain, it's dark it isn't involved in speech at all. So remember that. All right, here's the exact same brain reading a word. This time the activity starts at the back of the brain in the visual area. And if the person didn't know how to read, the signal would end right there. It wouldn't go anywhere else. But this person knows how to read. So the activity spreads from the back of the brain along the bottom and into the whole middle area, the part that's responsible for speech that we just saw when the person heard the spoken word. The same circuit is involved in speaking a word or just recognizing a word. So before we know how to read, both that visual area in the back and the language areas in the middle of the brain already exist. And we can see and we can speak and hear language, but those two areas are not connected to enable reading. We actually have to create that switchboard. It's called the visual word form area there in red. And so we have to create that switchboard through reading instruction. And so it begins to appear in the brain scans of non-readers 
in as little as five hours of training in decoding. All right, so here's a more detailed version of that image. The area in, area in blue automatically develops in humans. It's our vision processing area. And the areas in orange and green are pre-existing for spoken language. So reading is the process of creating a connection between the visual system in blue and the spoken language system in orange and green. So once we create that connection in red, we have a letterbox for the brain. It's also called the visual word form area, and it's where we can acquire literacy. All right, so let me give you an example. Let's use the word cat. We're born with the ability to hear and pronounce the word cat. We can differentiate the sounds in the word. We can hear the word and connect it to the meaning of a soft furry pet with ears and whiskers. But until we have that visual word form area, we can't attach the sounds in the word cat to the letters or codes that represent the word or recognize the word as a thing that means cat. We need that switchboard to get meaning from the word cat. So how do we help children or adults develop that ability? Well, the science of reading has debunked many of the methods um, that we have used over the years to teach reading, such as whole language and balanced literacy. But school psychologist and preeminent reading researcher, Dr. David Kilpatrick said, we teach reading in different ways, but they learn to read proficiently in only one way. So let's look at what the science of reading has taught us about that one way. So the simple view of reading answers the question, when you're presented with a passage of text, how do you get meaning from it? It says you need to do two things. Number one, you need to decode the text or convert written words into speech. And number two, you need to comprehend language or understand that speech. So that simple view of reading is detailed even further in Scarborough's Reading Rope. And so it shows the essential components of reading. In 2001, um, Dr. Hollis Scarborough, he's a psychologist and a liter literacy researcher, he created this reading rope using pipe cleaners to kind of illustrate to parents how the different strands of reading are all interconnected, yet independent of one another. And so Scarborough's rope actually captures the complexity of learning to read. It's made up of upper strands and lower strands, so the lower strands include word recognition skills, phonological awareness, decoding, sight recognition. And the upper strands are the language comprehension skills, vocabulary, structure, reasoning, literacy knowledge, and background knowledge is important too. All of those converge, intertwine, and result in skilled, accurate, fluid reading with strong comprehension. So notice that, that Scarborough's reading rope parts put together the exact same equation as the simple view of reading. Word recognition plus language comprehension equals skilled reading. All right, so how does that translate into practice? Remember that the science of reading research findings led to our understanding of how we learn to read? Well, that research also converged on a single way of how to teach reading. And that method is called the structured literacy approach. So structured literacy is not a specific program or curriculum, but it's an approach that specifies how to teach reading and what to teach. Here's the full definition. Structured literacy is explicit systematic teaching that focuses on phonological awareness, word recognition, phonics and decoding, spelling and syntax at the sentence and paragraph levels. Look familiar? It ought to, because it's how we at Learning Rx approach reading training. We just haven't used this language yet, but we're going to. So this next part is important. Let's break down each element of a structured literacy approach to reading instruction. So this visual shows that structured literacy is an approach that includes three teaching principles and six components that lead to effective reading instruction based on the science of reading. So first we're gonna look at how to teach reading in a structured literacy approach, what instructional methods are included. 
So teaching is explicit, systematic and cumulative, and diagnostic. And we're going to look at each of those in detail. So being explicit means that we provide clear instruction and modeling, directed practice, specific instructional routines, a high degree of interaction, and multi-sensory hands-on methods. All learning arts programs use explicit multi-sensory instruction. All right, the next method of instruction in a structured literacy approach is systematic and cumulative. So teaching follows a set scope and sequence going from simple to complex. The lessons spiral back around and build on each, each one and instruction leads students to building automaticity and skills. All Learning Rx reading programs use systematic and cumulative instruction. All right, the third method is diagnostic and responsive to the needs of individual students. So don't get hung up on the word diagnostic here. That doesn't mean that we're diagnosing a disorder. It means diagnostic teaching. So based on continuous assessment of student skills and then adapting our instruction for the individual student. So it includes dynamic feedback, personalized pacing and adjusting. It's assessment driven and it tracks progress. Look familiar? All Learning Rx programs include this element. All right, so to review, in a structured literacy approach, instruction is explicit, systematic and cumulative, and diagnostic and responsive. All Learning Rx programs include all of these instructional methods. All right, so let's move on to the content that a structured literacy approach to teaching reading includes. And I'm gonna go through these individually, so I won't read them on this slide. All right, the first element is phonology or the study of sounds. So structured literacy programs include instruction in the patterns of sounds in a language and phonemic awareness skills like segmenting, blending, rhyming, and manipulation of sounds. We find this in ReadRx and Liftoff, and even on a little bit of Think. All right, another element is called sound symbol correspondence, or sound to code, or sound to letter correspondence, or teaching that phonemes are represented by graphemes. So it's sound to letter or sound to code mapping. And we see that in ReadRx and Liftoff. All right, the next element of instruction and structured literacy is instruction in syllables. And that includes syllable patterns and word parts and syllable division rules. And we see that in ReadRx and ComprehendRx. The next element is morphology or the study of words. And so this means that we explicitly teach the structure of words, including bases and affixes. And we do that in ReadRx and ComprehendRx. So structured literacy also includes instruction in syntax. This means that we explicitly teach the mechanics of language, how to arrange words and how to build sentences. And we do that in ReadRx and ComprehendRx. And finally, structured literacy instruction includes the study of semantics or how to make meaning of text and specific comprehension strategies. And it also includes work with building vocabulary. And we do that in ReadRx and ComprehendRx. So to review, in a structured literacy approach, reading instruction includes phonology, sound symbol correspondence, syllables, morphology, syntax, semantics, and we find that at LearningRx. All right, so here we go looking at this um, image again. So all of the elements taught through evidence-based methods lead to effective reading instruction in a structured literacy approach. And Learning Rx reading aligns with this approach. All right, so do a couple other programs. So the most common programs that use a structured literacy approach are based on Orton-Gillingham, and you can see a list of pretty common Orton-Gillingham-based programs here. It is the, those programs are based on structured literacy. There are minor variations among each of these programs, but overall they do follow the same scope and sequence of content with instructional methods that align 
um, with a structured literacy approach. And Linda Mood Bell programs are considered structured literacy as well. The difference between the main difference between Orton Gillingham and Linda Mood Bell is that one teaches sound production first, OG does, and Linda Mood teaches sound perception first. So this question lingers. If there are already structured reading programs based on the science of reading out there, why are only 34% of students proficient in reading? All right, let's break that down. So this is one version of a reading skills pyramid. And we've discussed that the structure of, sorry, that the science of reading points to a structured literacy approach. And the science of reading also tells us that we need these components in white to be competent readers. So starting at the bottom is phonological awareness. And phonemic awareness above that is one aspect of phonological awareness. So let's look at that phonological awareness umbrella. So it begins with hearing rhymes and parts of sentences, and then syllables and word parts, and finally the manipulation of individual sounds within words. So it goes from largest to smallest. And so the smallest are the individual sounds within words, and that's phonemic awareness. And it's the most difficult of all of the phonological awareness skills to acquire. All right, coming back to the pyramid, then we learn phonics, or the ability to connect sounds to codes, which includes encoding and decoding, and then fluent reading. And then finally, comprehension and vocabulary, or the ability to understand language and what we read. But we know that even programs with all of these components taught through a structured literacy approach are still struggling to move the needle in dramatic ways. So why do those programs not make significant gains in foundational reading skills? Well, we believe that strong cognitive skills are the foundation needed to support the development of all the other components. And that's how Learning Rx is different. How is Learning Rx different from Orton Gillingham based programs? And your answer is Orton Gillingham based programs also follow structured science of reading and structured literacy approach, but Learning Rx has the only science of reading based structured literacy program with training in the major cognitive skills. And you can list them because they serve as the foundation for all learning. All right, how is Learning Rx different from programs A, B, and C? Just plug in anything that, that someone might ask that aren't structured literacy based. So we're aligned with the science of reading. If that program isn't using a structured literacy approach, they aren't aligned with the science of reading. Simple as that. And what does the science of reading tells us? It tells us how to teach reading and what's included. 